We're going to take a look and focus on repeated sampling. So repeated sampling is when you draw a sample from a population. And for a sample, we already know this, but for the mean, we use X bar, whereas for the population, we use mu. Right? So we take a sample, which is X bar, um, and we take an estimate of the actual population mean mu. And we also take an estimate of the standard deviation S, of the population standard deviation, and then we write sigma, okay? Um, S is also sigma, it's just a lowercase sigma. And when we sample, our data may turn out to be drastically different, and this is why statisticians often repeat the sampling method. Okay, so when we repeat samples, we want to repeat them of the same size. And the more and more samples that we repeat, and that we take, and that we test, um, the more our sample, our X bar, our sample mean, is going to tend to the population mean mu. Okay, so this right here is the equation that we're going to use for sigma. So we're going to do sigma over root n, and n is going to be the sample size. Okay, if we take a look down here, I'm going to call this diagram 1, and I'm going to call this diagram 2. If we take a look at diagram 1, it's more spread out, the data is more spread out, and this middle line, of course, we already know that this is mu, so the standard deviation is actually greater. But if we repeated the sampling size of size n, what's going to happen is, again, this middle line right here is mu, and what's going to happen is that the standard deviation is going to pull the data more accurately toward the average. Okay, and the rule of thumb is that at least 30 data is sufficient uh, to, give an ac to give a reasonably accurate estimate of mu. Now, I just want to point this out. I'm going to change the color to red. Okay. If you can see here, we have mu, so, or sorry, sigma, so one standard deviation higher than the mean, and then one standard deviation lower than the mean. In here, we have something different. We have sigma over root n. This is because this first diagram represents if you had sigma of x bar and you subbed in one. So if you only took the sample size n, which n equals 1, because obviously root 1 just cancels, and then you're left with sigma. Okay, this is when a single value is randomly taken from the population. Again, a single value is not going to give you the best or the most accurate results.